Did you enjoy my life? The Falklands War. The Falkland Islands are an archipelago located in South America in the Argentine Sea. They're approximately 500 kilometers from the coast. At the beginning of the 19th century, Argentina had declared sovereignty over these islands. However, in 1833, Britain seized the archipelago and expelled the few remaining Argentine occupants from the islands as the Falkland Islands became part of the list of British overseas territories. And the European power made sure to reject Argentina's claims. On April 2, 1982, the Argentine military junta, led by the Finn and Leopold of Altieri, announced negotiations with Great Britain and launched an invasion of the islands. The reason this decision was made was purely political. The junta had come under fire for economic mismanagement and human rights abuse. They thought that by recovering the Falkland Islands, the Argentine people would join and support the government. But although the confrontation caused enthusiasm in the citizens, the rejection towards the military government continued. Evidence of government human rights violations. Found that around 30,000 were left missing, and thousands said. This resulted in the freedom of the inhabitants being tortured, persecuted, censored, and limited. In addition to the abuse of these rights, the country also suffered economically. Unemployment rose sharply, as GDP fell. In 1982 inflation, in Argentina was almost 165%. And it is considered one of the worst economic crises in the country. In the initial invasion in April, Argentine troops quickly overcame the small English guard in Stanley the capital. Despite the losses in their groups, the Argentine military followed orders not to cause casualties in the English troops. The next day, on April 3rd, Argentine sailors took control over the South Georgia Islands, located 1,300 kilometers from the Falkland Islands. By the end of April, Argentina had managed to place 10,000 troops in the archipelago, with little training and few resources. Another of the heirs of the Argentine military junta was having thought that Britain would not react or would not respond to the invasion of the islands due to the distance they had from a European country, and because they had not been of special interest to the British. The only thing that was in negotiation between the two countries was the possibility of a shared administration of the territory. However, under the leadership of Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, the UK reacted against the invasion, although she was in a detrimental economic moment. The British government declared the area 320 kilometers around the Falkland Islands of Warzone, the naval force mounted around to aircraft carriers, HMS Hermes and HMS Invincible, which were sent to the archipelago on April 5, 1982, with departures from Portsmouth. In addition to the aircraft carriers, the British response also included the nuclear submarine, the HMS Conqueror. In total, about 30,000 men were on board this operation, which sought to reclaim the islands. On the one hand, Argentina had the support of some Latin American countries, Panama, Peru, and Venezuela. At the international level, the Soviet Union gave minimal support to the Argentine forces. On the other hand, the United Kingdom received great support from the United States. The Argentina thought would remain in a neutral position. The American country allowed the English to use their communications equipment, their missiles, and military intelligence. Other countries that supported the British were France and Chile, the neighboring country to Argentina. The Falkland Islands area became the zone of total exclusion. In other words, the area corresponded to 370 kilometers around the archipelago and in honor. During the war, any ship or aircraft from any other country entering the area would be attacked by English troops without reason or warning. As of April 23, 1982, any Argentine vessel or vehicle that could be considered a threat to the British forces would be combated. This declaration includes Argentine civil aircraft. Argentina responded immediately. Leopoldo Galtieri prepared for the defense and announced to the Argentine people, if they want to come, let them come. On April 25th, the British fleet took control over the South Georgia Islands where they managed to capture one of the Argentine electric submarines. On the second, the British nuclear submarine sent the Argentine ship General Bill Renault out of the war zone by 323 of its 1,093 members died. The British counter-attack consisted of bombing the airport, located in the capital of the Falkland Islands, to avoid so that the Argentine Air Force could send supplies to the troops in the islands. The British force depended on two aircraft carriers, and the loss of one of them would mean its withdrawal from the war zone. The air coverage they had is limited, to only 20 short range aircraft on the Bay missiles. To make up for the lack of coverage, the British used frigates as radar pickets. 
attacked to prevent Argentine surprise attacks. Even so, not all frigates had anti-aircraft systems. Those weapons whose objective is to intercept enemy aircraft in flight. This left the British fleet vulnerable to possible Argentine attacks. They had no way to attack and fire the missile if Argentina were to launch them. Finally, on May 4th, Argentine forces managed to sink the British destroyer, HMS Sheffield, with a missile. While the attacks directed at Argentina caused the South American country to lose around 30% of its planes, this weakened the Argentine military force, and who was unable to prevent a UK landing on the islands. They expected the UK to attack immediately after reaching the islands. The General Mary Menez concentrated his troops in the capital Stanley and to be prepared. However, the United Kingdom did not have the same plan. The commanders of the British forces made the first landing in Port of San Carlos. On the north coast of the island, from there they carried Stanley's attack over land. The English arrived and opposed on the islands on May 21st. But the Argentine defense, around 5,000 men, quickly organized an effective resistance. And it took hard or intense battles to bring it down. Meanwhile, the Argentine Air Force continued its attacks on the English Navy. Thinking to frigates a destroyer, the container ship with two helicopters, and the troop landing ship. The sail of Argentina was never able to damage the aircraft carrier, or sink enough English ships to jeopardize ground operations. Argentines lost most of their aircraft, as well as their Falkland based helicopters, and their ground attack aircraft. In total, Argentina lost 22 aircraft and 10 pilots to British operations. Their response to UK attacks was quickly provided, and Argentina managed to sink the cargo ship as a to conveyor, carrying supplies for ground operations. The British only had one option to win the war. To wipe out Argentine ground forces, things made it seem easy to get. On the one hand, the elite Argentine troops were on the border, with Chile from whom they had an attack. Also, the military corps located if the Falklands was not properly armed, and their capacity was not the same as that of the British troops. Finally, the Argentines were not prepared for the strong cold that was in the area at that time of year. Departing from Puerto San Carlos, the English advanced to the south under extremely adverse weather conditions. In order to reach other military camps on the islands, they fought for several days, having to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But certain Argentine troops along various mountain ranges then the British forces managed to take and occupy the lands west of Stanley. With the United Kingdom surrounding it and blocking the capital and the main port, Argentina did not find a way to defend itself. Then on June 2nd, in the Algeciras, operation was carried out in Spanish territory. The objective of the Argentine forces was to sabotage the British Navy troops located in the church base of Gibraltar and thus prevent their departure to the Falkland Islands. Their strategy was to sink a warship with submarine mines and tactical divers and do it covertly and unofficially. However, the plan failed when British intelligence discovered communications between Buenos Aires and the Argentine embassy in Madrid. The local police stopped the team, ending the operation. On June 14, General Mendes signed the unconditional surrender of the Argentine troops, thus declaring the end of conflict and war. However, on June 20th, the last military action took place where the British withdrew small Argentine barracks from the South Sandwich Islands. Though the Argentines maintained a scientific base, but due to the very low temperatures they miscalculated the moment of the attack and the resistance of the United Kingdom. On the Argentine side, 649 men were killed, 27 planes and 6 ships destroyed. While on the British side, the casualties were low, with around 255 deaths, 34 planes and 8 sunken ships. The reason why the number of deaths is much higher on the Argentine side is due to the fact that many of the country's soldiers were young, poorly trained, poorly fed, and poorly armed which limited their capabilities against the best prepared British forces. The post-war consequences triggered the departure of the military government from Argentine power. He was seriously discredited for not having prepared or supported his own military forces in the invasion of the islands, which was Gaultier's resignation, ending more than seven years of dictatorship in 1983. Meanwhile in the UK, Margaret Thatcher turned the national support for the forces during the war into a total victory for her Conservative Party in the following year's parliamentary elections. The war ended in 1982, but the dispute over the Falkland Islands continues. Argentina continues to claim that the archipelago belongs to it, although its inhabitants insist on remaining under British sovereignty. Did you know about the Falklands War? Remember to like this video, and subscribe if you are not already. See you in the next video.